please state your name, your organization, and then your question. Hi, Brian with the Barbell Spin. Rich, uh, you've now won 10 medals at the CrossFit Games. Can you put into words what that means to you? Um, yeah, uh, I don't like the last, the, the two that aren't gold uh, very much. Um, but yeah, no, it's been a great, great time. Um, the been? last couple of years, this last one was a blast. We had a great time. Uh, this team, um, it's a lot of fun to hang out with, and uh, we'll miss you, Dre. Yeah, uh, Ben Garvis with Wadadi. This question's for Dave. Dave, it's you and me up here. Um, I wanted to hear about your process and digesting what happened this year and how you turn that into the event for next year. The process for this year? Whew, that's long. I don't want to talk about that. Uh, hey, Will with CNN. Uh, Tia? Tia, over here. <laughs> uh, what's it like to make history becoming the first woman to win three CrossFit Games titles? Uh, hey, Dad. Hi. <laughs> um, oh, it's, it's pretty rewarding, and uh, it's, it's actually a huge honor to be able to have gone up against such phenomenal athletes and to be able to uh, podium, well, yeah, podium for three in a row um, on top. That's it's definitely going to go down in the books as uh, one of the highlights of my life. I will say this about the process. It started with the cuts, the big events. Those were the anchors this year and then built around. And the other big anchor was I knew I wanted to do the standard as the final. The standard being something that we've played with, I've played with for, for a number of years, since 2007 and eight in concept. Back then we were talking about how a standard, a good standard for high level athletes would be completing those three in under 10 minutes. And a handful of those guys did that and that's the standard of, of the best. So, so those two are kind of early, early, as in early last year, event ideas that needed to be built out. And then once those are built out, everything else kind of gets plugged in and we see what's happening. And another cool anchor for this year was swimming on Sunday. Sunday, I wanted to do that last year. For certain reasons, we couldn't. And we've, I've been wanting to, for a few years, swim at the end or towards the end. This year worked out really well with the additional cuts and all the cuts to do it on Sunday. That's part of the process. Annabelle from Diario As, that one is for Dave. Dave? <laughs> um, the new system with all the cuts and all the changes has been a little bit rough for some of the leads, and some of them has been complaining a little bit about the new system. What would you say to them? Be better. <laughs> Be better. Come back more prepared next year to excel at the, anything that's thrown at you because all of these guys did that. They all excelled at what was thrown at them when it was thrown at them and they didn't have any hiccups, uh, major hiccups to bump them out of it. Y you know, the big complaints on the cuts when you really look at it came after day, the 40 to 20. Nobody was complaining bef before that. But once you started seeing the big names from the 40 to 20 go, that's when all the chirping started happening. And so, but when you look at that point, there was, what, already five events or, or a number of events that had happened to get to that point. So it wasn't one thing. There was plenty of things, almost a whole, you know, in the old system, hold regionals worth of workouts before we got down to that 10. So, you know, they need to look in the mirror. They don't need to complain to anyone else, but they need to look in the mirror and take responsibility for it. That's what, it, that's what these athletes should do. They should take responsibility for it and say, hey, and some of them have. Not all of them are complaining. I think uh, fans are complaining more than the athletes, to be honest. Hi, I'm Saul Keaton over here with Barbell Spin. Um, mayhem, uh, particularly China and Tasia, uh, do you guys plan to stay with the team going forward? And could the team uh, talk about, you know, replacing Dre on, uh, with the season turning around so quickly this year? Is it on? Is it on? Okay. Um, I would love to be on this team again next year. I had a great time, I think. Tasia, same for me. <laughs> um, we're still trying to convince Dre to stay. Um, we love him, even though he's really annoying. <laughs> yeah. 
I, they should start thinking about a way to convince Rich to stay, because we're going to start thinking about a way to make him come back and defend his number five. So that's the, that's the big talking point. We got we to gotta figure out how we're going to get Rich back for the epic showdown between those two for the fifth title. That's what we all need to be thinking about and working on. I got a question over here. Oh, Dave. Uh, Tommy Marquez here. I just had a quick question. The last time there were major organizational changes, it was kind of the advent of the open era. With the changes that have happened this year and how the games played out, do you think this year marks kind of a new era of the CrossFit Games? Partially. Yeah, it's different. It's new. Um, I wouldn't call it a new era, but it's, uh, it's a different, different phase. The other thing is we've always constantly changed the games, as you well know, and this, these, some of these changes were just a lot at once. So it's, I don't view it as a new era, I just view it as keep charging forward, let's go, let's get to work. Uh, Br Brittany Klein here from the Morning Chalk Up, also from Australia, so I think my question needs to go to Tia. One of the favourite moments of the game was that foot race with Matt McLeod. You had it in the bag. What does it take for a champion to, to really continue to push that, that time barrier? What was going through your head then when you knew you had more events to go? You really showed the sign of a champion there. W what was the motivation behind that? Um, it was actually really cool to be able to go head-to-head uh, -head with Matt. Um, we didn't really need to exert too much energy. We had such a strong lead. So that paddle back was, was actually quite a nice warm down um, in a way. Um, with no disrespect to the other competitors, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, and then, you know, that, that last little bit, uh, I said to Matt, you know, hey, let's uh, have a bit of a sprint to the end. And so it was just a little bit of fun. It was really cool. Hi, this is Robbie from Box Rocks. My question's for Noah and Kristen. You guys are both quite distinguished CrossFit athletes, been here for year after year after year, and, and now you're finally on the podium. How does that feel, and what have you done differently to make that happen this year? Um, what to say, it's, I think, amazing, to be honest. I, I can't believe it uh, yet, but it's, it's just a lot of hard work uh, for a lot of years. But I think this year for me, I've addressed my weaknesses and I worked really hard on them. And um, I'm really happy that I got to show that I've improved in the things that I have been weak on uh, earlier years. So that's a big win for me. Man, it feels so, so good. I'm so grateful to be sitting up here with a medal around my neck finally. The six years, or I guess five years prior to this, that I've tried and essentially failed at my goal of getting up onto the podium at the CrossFit Games, I've had moments of doubt and I've thought about, I don't know if I would say quitting, but there are times after each of those years where I consider whether or not I want to continue doing this. So I think it's a testament to uh, just keep showing up and keep getting after it, and hopefully eventually you'll be able to achieve your goals. Hello, test. Hi, Julian from Jewel Studios. Noah, uh, how does it feel to be the first person in a few years to wear that white shirt besides Matt? <laughs> Man, that also felt really good. I was kind of sad to give it up today, but you got to give it up to this guy. He is a freaking stud. He's a phenomenal athlete. And... Uh, after getting this little confidence boost, I gotta say I'll be back. I'll be trying to wear it again next year, all the way through the weekend this time. BKG, Grant with Down on the Box, congrats on your first podium finish this year. Could you talk about the support you received, specifically a big cheering section in the end zone rooting you on, and then a training partner friend, Frederick, as well, who had to drop out of the competition? Yo, this is his second year on the podium. Hello. <laughs> Apologies. Yeah, yeah, you're good, you're good. Yeah, so I finished uh, on the podium in 2015, I think. 
You know, I really wanted to get back on that podium. And I've been in top five for the last two years, so I'm really happy that I made it this year. Uh, unfortunately, Frederick, he had to drop out this year. But um, I've been training with Annie and Frederick leading up to the games for the last five years, I think. And um, I'm re I really appreciate that, you know, those guys are, they, they push me. And we usually come down here to the U.S. like early July. We dedicate like four or five weeks outside of Iceland to come here. And, and um, I think that's like probably the biggest reason why I'm on the podium now, because I can go away and then just focus on training and, and then finally ended up on the third place again. Uh, Will from CNN again. This is for Matt. I'm over here. Um, you said yesterday that things didn't feel different to not be in the leader jersey. It must have felt different with just a few events to go to be chasing the lead. How was that? And did it make Stefan atop the podium feel different this year? Uh, you, you know, it was uh, kind of took some pressure off, you know. Um, I was already in second place so it was like okay i got nowhere to go but up so you know i'm just gonna go all out you know there's uh i don't think there's any minimum work requirements and i had nothing to lose so i just i just went as hard as i could and tried to hold on as long as i could and uh thankfully it worked out um that doesn't change how i feel um being on top of the podium at the end of the week um it's just it's a it's a, it's a year of dedication. It's a year of work. It's a year of uh, a team just grinding every day. Um, so I'm just happy it paid off. Uh, Brian with the barbell spin. Jamie, how would uh, this year's games compare how your body felt throughout the competition? Um, every year it feels pretty brutal. I think I forget every time it comes round. Um, yesterday was pretty good, finishing early, so then we got to recover a bit more in the evening, but you get back in the morning and everything aches. Um, but yeah, in a different way, it's more the hands gave up a little bit, but every year it's difficult in its own way. Uh, Tommy, again, this is questions for Jamie. Jamie, this year, along with Camille, you became the second woman to stand on both the team and individual podium. Um, how does the feeling being on the podium as an individual compare to back when you were with Yas on the, on the podium as well? Um, it's very different. So sort of like the team, you're pleased with how everyone worked together and it, there's a lot more things that I feel could go wrong almost. Um, but yeah, on your own, it's... You're not an individual anyway. You've got your team behind you, so you feel like you're doing it for them as well, your coach, nutritionist, everyone who's helped out to get you here. Um, so it is very different, but they're both rewarding in their own ways. And I, I enjoy both of them. <laughs> uh, Brittany Klein here again. This question's for Matt. Um, knowing that you're about to match Rich's history-making performance, that fifth title and hearing Dave joke about it, is that something that you'd want to defend or perhaps take him on in 2020? <laughs> Maybe Rich... You no, I know on. this is a story that everyone wants, but I mean, if, if, you're, if you're trying to make yourself feel good about your accomplishments because of how it compares to someone else's, oh, you're, you're, chasing, you're chasing something that's not good. Yeah, I'm happy with what I've accomplished because it's what... I wanted to do, you know? Same. No, and I, I mean, it's, it's obviously been a topic that's, I, I get asked all the time. I, after I won the games for the first time, people started, and I'm like, holy shit, like, dude, that's a long ways away, and you know, it's a lot of work on the way. Um, I mean, if Rich had only won twice, like, should I have quit last year? If he, if he had one individual 10 times, should I not be happy with my performance today? No, I'm happy with my performance today because I worked hard for it. Uh, Patrick, Morning Chalk Up. This uh, question is actually for old uh, CrossFit Mayhem. Uh, actually, Rich, can you talk about you have 
three winners all from CrossFit Mayhem. Can you talk about that? What's in the water? <laughs> I don't think there's anything in the water. I think uh, I speak for all everybody that's up here, the six of us that uh, it's just hard work. You know, it's it, we, we have an amazing place in Cookville is an incredible facility, but um, you know, we all do different things, but it's all hard work when it comes down to it. And, um, you know, it's it's been awesome and, and very proud of each and every one of us that are sitting up here and even and Haley as well. Haley did an incredible job in the uh, finishing in the in the top 10. So super proud of her because, you know, she's with the team day in and day out. And when China's not there, she's China. And so it's been really cool to see that she, you know, stepped up and, and did an amazing job. So proud of her for sure. It has a lot to do with the people, too. I always say, you know, surround yourself with good people, but there is some really incredible people down there. Yeah, it's amazing things happen when you surround yourself with like-minded people. We all have the same goals, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, we, we all motivate each other, we all push each other, and, uh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> Uh, ben Garvis from Wadadi. Uh, I unfortunately have a question for two people, just to direct to Tia and Matt. Uh, we've watched Rich build quite the community. Is that something that you guys want to do similarly in your future as you um, continue to compete but eventually start to plan for the future? Uh, for me, I think, I, of course, I want to um, inspire the people around me, uh, you know, that's family, friends, the community of where I'm from, um, back home in Australia and also home in Cookville. Um, but, you know, I'm, I just want to try and go out there and do my absolute best, go and achieve whatever I want to uh, set my mind to and hopefully that can spread across the whole world and inspire everyone, so... Yeah, I'm kind of on the same page. You know, I've I've had a couple couple people close to me that uh, you know they they started working out with me. You know, then they lost 60, 80 pounds, and you know I, I keep in contact with them, and it's those relationships that that I really look forward to. Um, in terms of, are, are you talking about like opening up an affiliate or something like that? No, um, you know I I don't think running a gym or coaching it just it's not for me. I. I really take pride in the people that are close to me and that I help motivate and help in the gym, uh, working closer one-on-one. -on -one. So I would like to start doing some more stuff like that. Um, hi, this is it's Robbie from Box Rocks again. This question is for Tia and for Bjorgvin. Um, speaking to loads of the national champions, they've all said how much they enjoyed competing with all of you lots. Um, what's it like from your side, competing in that first event against a huge field of athletes, and how, how was it? Uh, I, I thought it was really cool, you know. It, it actually took me back to when I very first started, and I was so starstruck by all the ladies that I was competing against, you know, walking walking past the legends of CrossFit. It was, um, it was really, really cool, and so, the fact that there's opportunities for people out there um, that may not ever had had the opportunity in previous years, it's really, really cool. And to be a part of that is is amazing. Um, I think, you know, it's not, it's not just going to help the sport grow, but it's going to create so many memories and, and experiences for myself as well. And um, it, I'm so glad that they're a part of it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, it's pretty cool that all those people came out here. I think that there's a lot of people that paid a lot of money to come out here just to experience the CrossFit Games. Um, I mean, that first day was pretty crazy. It was so many people taking the floor. But um, I think, like, this is, has been, like, the best CrossFit Games for me, at least. And uh, it's pretty cool to see, like, how many people just came out here and, like, gave it all they had. Tommy here again. I got a question for Noah. Um, it's a two-parter. Uh, can you describe the emotions that were going through, I guess, your head at right when you crossed the finish line in the final event? And then if you had to pick a moment across the weekend that was a turning point for you, uh, what would that be? 
<sighs> Both great questions. The, I kind of expected more emotions to spill out of me right when I did cross the finish line and actualize reaching the goal of making it onto the podium at the CrossFit Games, but I, I was a little bit more emotional before that event when I realized that I needed to just go out one more time and seal the deal. And uh, I don't know, maybe the, the tears will well up a little bit later, but it felt great. And I would say that the turning point of the weekend when I kind of realized that I could actually do it and start really believing in this year being the year was maybe obviously Mary um, to duke it out with this guy and just the energy of the crowd and that just got the ball, ball rolling in a really positive way for me. This question's for Justin. Can you give uh, your assessment of the games? I think this has probably been the most exciting CrossFit games that we've ever had. And it started with the broadest field of athletes and it ended with a class of all stars that duked it out for two and a half days of competition. Uh, I think the fans that were here experienced something that fans that have watched it through their television screen or you know you, you guys' coverage, uh, you can't fully appreciate, which is the electricity of the Coliseum that would have been impossible with a larger field of athletes uh, during the clean event, um, the excitement when these guys were going for broke on Mary, uh, the excitement today when Matt was putting up a last minute charge to seal the deal. So there's something really special about how the weekend ends. And for people that are here, you've experienced it, and I think it's unique. And we're looking forward to inviting athletes and fans back to this for many years to come. And additionally with that, can you make a comment about the wild card? Did it do what you wanted it to do or what Greg planned for it to do? I think it was wild. Uh, I think we didn't have expectations going into this year on exactly how those spots would be used. And I think the fans got what they wanted, which was a voice in the competition. I think it increased the level of athlete that competed here, which only increased the claim that our champions have and the top 10 athletes have. Um, so I think it was wild, I think it was exciting, and, uh, and I think it also created a little extra drama on those first days of competition down leaderboard, when the guys who were champions were doing all the work on top of the leaderboard. Uh, Jessica Danger with the Morning Chalk Up. This is for Dave and also Justin. Um, is there anything that you guys programmed or planned or executed this games that, you, that did not go as well as you intended or didn't pan out the way you had hoped? Yeah, almost everything. <laughs> but that's how we get better. I mean, I'm constantly looking at what we're doing wrong and how to make it better. So, you know, I have a mental list of multiple things that could have been better, should have done this, should have done that, could have done this, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, at this point, I'm not ready to start talking about those because it's just, that's a lot. And it's, it's on the floor, it's off the floor, it's, it's everything. But that's how the process, that's how the process works and that's how this gets better. I'll also say that this isn't an, an event or a competition that just falls off a conveyor belt. You know, if you were building a basketball tournament, the rims are the same height, every game's the exact same length of time, and there's not a lot of actual variables. Uh, we ran 12 different events for the individuals. Each of them had a different floor. They had very, very different challenges that they presented for the athletes and the judges and the media teams and for fans as the drama built up. So uh, this isn't a sport where perfection is the goal. It's to make sure that we continue to move forward and, uh, and challenge this with new things. And so we don't do the same thing every year. And, uh, and so that uh, also opens it up that we can do a lot more interesting things in the future. Brian with the barbell spin, Matt and Tia, how long will you enjoy this victory before you start thinking about next season with the Open starting in October? Tonight. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a little more time. 
Jamie, moving up to third place this year from your 11th place finish last year, could you talk about what you did this season to prepare and made that improvement? Um, this year around, we, uh, I managed to spend three months in London, just sort of focusing a bit more on, um, on training at the start of the year. I found that helped just to like dial in the, the things that you don't always think about, like your recovery, your nutrition, sleep, um, just the extra little things. Also, I think just the third time through, feeling a bit more confident and yeah, I enjoyed the, the cut system. Like it's a bit more cutthroat and then you are, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, thank you very much.